All right, so buckle up, because today we are diving into the world of those crazy smart language models you keep hearing about, you know, mm -hmm. the LLMs like uh, ChatGPT and GPT-4. Right, right. The ones that can practically, like, write you a novel before you finish your coffee. Yeah, they're pretty impressive. You sent over some really interesting articles on this, and uh, yeah. I think it's time we figure out how these things actually work. <gasps> yeah, absolutely. Because seriously, are we on the brink of some kind of revolution here, or...? It's certainly a fascinating time to be thinking about language and technology, that's for sure. Yeah. It's moving so fast. So fast. Yeah. Okay. So one of the articles kept mentioning something called a latent space. Oh, okay. What is that? Some kind of secret code these LLMs use. You could think of it like that, or a map. Oh. But instead of cities and countries, this map charts out all of language itself. Mm. It's multidimensional, meaning it captures all sorts of complex relationships between words and concepts. So like on a map, some things are closer together than others. Precisely. Words and concepts that appear together frequently in the real world, right. like uh, sun and bright, yeah. would be clustered close together on this map. Okay. This clustering is based on massive amounts of text data the LLMs are trained on. And that's where the jungle snooker analogy comes in, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So imagine a pool table. Okay. But instead of being, you know, bar size, it's as big as Central Park. Wow. Millions of numbered balls, each representing a word, are scattered across this table. Wait, I'm already lost. Okay. What do the pool balls have to do with language? Yeah. So each ball's position on the jungle snooker table represents its relationship to all the other words. Hmm. The LLMs learn these positions, these relationships, by analyzing tons and tons of text. So instead of potting balls, they're mapping out the entire English language. Yeah, or whatever language they're trained on. Oh, okay. Precisely. So they're becoming experts at jungle snooker, which just happens to be the key to generating human-like text. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Okay, but this whole jungle snooker thing, it makes me wonder. Yeah. LLMs are good at mapping these relationships. Right. But how do they deal with things like sarcasm yeah. or like humor? Mm -hmm. Because those kind of depend on understanding context, yeah. not just which words usually go together. That's an incredibly important point. And it gets at the heart of what's both fascinating and potentially limited about LLMs. Okay. They excel at recognizing patterns. Mm-hmm. But true understanding, yeah. the kind that grasps the subtle nuances of human communication, right. is a whole other ballgame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not quite there yet. That's where the whole unreasonably effective idea comes into play, right? Exactly. Like yeah. Doing things we didn't even really think were possible. Right. But we're not even sure how. Yeah, it's almost as if they've stumbled upon a shortcut in how we communicate. Okay. A cheat code for generating language that looks and sounds right, even if the underlying comprehension isn't quite there yet. So they're just really good mimics. In a way, yeah. They're like incredibly talented parrots, able to reproduce the sounds and patterns of human language with remarkable accuracy. But if we push that analogy a bit further, parrots don't understand the words they're mimicking. Right. They're just repeating what they've heard. Precisely. Yeah. And that's where the allegory of the cave comes into play. Ah, yes. Plato's famous. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. The allegory of the cave. You got it. Okay. Remember, the prisoners in the cave, they only ever see shadows Ugh. projected on the wall. Okay. They don't see the real objects that are casting those shadows. So you're saying LLMs are like those prisoners? It's a powerful analogy, right? Okay. LLMs, with their incredible pattern recogn recognition abilities, yeah. have become masters of the shadows. Okay. Crafting text that is often like indistinguishable from human generated language. Right. But the question remains. Yeah. Can they break free from the cave okay. and grasp the true essence of the concepts they're manipulating? Okay, I'm hooked, but like how do we even Yeah. How do we even begin to push these LLMs toward the mouth of the cave, so to speak? That's the billion dollar question. Yeah. And it might not be a single answer. Okay. You know, it might be an ongoing process right. of refinement. Yeah. And perhaps even fundamental shifts in how we approach the problem. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that LLMs break language down into these things called tokens. Yes. Does that play into all of this at all? Absolutely. It's like LLMs are constantly breaking down language well, yeah. into its smallest units. Okay. Like building blocks. Right. They call these units tokens. Think mm -hmm. of it as turning words into numbers. 
Okay. And then using those numbers to map the relationships between those words. So it's more than just mapping individual words. Yes. They're mapping the building blocks that make up those words. Precisely. And that's where things get really interesting. Okay. These tokens aren't always whole words. Okay. They can be parts of words, punctuation marks, yeah. even specific characters. Okay. This allows the LLMs to capture the nuances of language at a much uh, finer level. But if they're working with these, like, tiny fragments of language, doesn't that make the jungle snooker table like way more complex? It does. It does. But it also makes it more powerful by breaking down language into these smaller units. Right. LLMs can start to see patterns and relationships that would be impossible to detect at the word level. Okay. It's like they're developing a deeper understanding of the underlying structure of language itself. Okay. So they're getting better at jungle snooker even as the game gets more complex. Right. But does that bring them any closer to understanding? It's a question of how we define understanding, right? Yeah. Perhaps LLMs are showing us that there are multiple paths to intelligence, mm. multiple ways of interacting with and comprehending the world. Okay. Yeah. You said earlier that LLMs are unreasonably effective. Yeah. But if they're not truly understanding, then how can they be so good at what they do? It's one of the biggest mysteries in the field. Right. It suggests that there might be something inherently powerful yeah. about the statistical relationships mm -hmm. embedded in language itself. So it's not just that LLMs are good at mimicking. It's that they're tapping into something fundamental about how language works. It's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. And it raises even more questions. Like what? What are the limits of this statistical approach? Okay. Can LLMs continue to improve indefinitely or will they eventually hit a wall? Mm, right? Big questions. And if they do keep improving, what does that mean for us? Right, exactly. Are we talking about a future where LLMs are like our collaborators or our competitors? Yeah. Or something else entirely? These are questions we all need to be thinking about. Yeah. The future of language, it seems, is far from certain. It's like we're handing LLMs the keys to the kingdom, but we're not even sure if they'll, you know, know how to rule. Yeah, it's true. It's like we're giving them this incredible tool, our language. Right. But what they ultimately do with it right. remains to be seen. Yeah, it's like watching a child take their first steps, right? Yeah. Like, we can guide them, yeah. but ultimately they're going to find their own way. Exactly. I remember one of the articles mentioned the cognitive sciences. Yes. And how LLMs might actually be a model for like understanding the human brain better. Yeah, it's an area of research that's really heating up right now. Okay. You know... If these LLMs, based on relatively simple statistical models, right. can achieve these remarkable feats of language generation, yeah. does that tell us something about how our brains process language? Well, we're not just teaching LLMs to use language. Uh -huh. We're potentially learning from them about how we use language ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. It's a two-way street. Yeah. By studying LLMs, we might unlock secrets about our own cognitive processes, about yeah. the hidden depths of language and thought that we haven't even begun to explore. It's like we're holding up a mirror to our own minds. Right. But the reflection is both, like, familiar and strangely alien at the same time. A perfect way to put it. Yeah. And it brings us back to that idea of understanding, right? Right. We might need to broaden our definition of intelligence okay. to acknowledge that there could be multiple paths to achieving it. Multiple paths, multiple ways of thinking, multiple ways of experiencing the world. Exactly. It's kind of a humbling but also exciting thought. It is. It's humbling but it's also exhilarating, right? Okay. LLMs are challenging our assumptions okay. about what it means to be intelligent, to understand, okay. to communicate. Well, this deep dive has definitely given me a lot to think about. Good. I'm glad. The journey is far from over, though. Right. We're really just beginning to explore this new frontier of language and artificial intelligence. And who knows what we'll discover along the way? Who knows? Maybe the real treasure isn't the language we started with. Right. But the new ways of thinking and communicating that we're discovering along the way. I like that. A very appropriate thought for our deep dive today. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey into the world of LLMs. My pleasure. Until next time, keep asking those big questions. Absolutely, and keep exploring the endless possibilities of language. And we'll see you next time.